Today we're going to look at a legal problem called path sum number two. So I made a video called path sum number one. So this problem is kind of similar to that. And but this question kind of uh, involves backtracking, um, not just DFS, but also backtracking as well. So if you have a look at that video, I highly recommend to check out that video before this one. So basically the the problem is that we're given the roots of the binary tree and an integer target sum return all root to leaf paths where each path uh, sum equals target sum, right? So a leaf is a node with no children. So notice that we're going from the root to the leaf, right? So the root to the leaf path. So if let's say if the binary tree is null, right? So if I have a tree that's null, right? And you can see the constraints that the number of nodes in our tree can be ranged from zero to 5,000. So that means that I could have a binary tree and the root is null. So if that's the case, then in this case, we're just going to have no path at all, right? Even though the target sum is zero and the current binary tree is null, then there's no path at all because we need to have a root um, to go down to the leaf, right? Even though there's only one node, then still, right? We, we want to have at least one node to traverse down. If there's no node, Right. If there's if the binary tree is null, then in this case we don't have any path at all, right? Okay. So in this case, you can see here we have an example, right? We have five, four, eleven, two, we have five, eight, four, five, which all has a sum which is equal to target sum twenty two, right? And you can see that we're basically return a list of list integers uh, that captures the path, right? So in this case, um, you can see we can also have a empty list, right? So if there's no path, right, that has a sum equal to target sum, then we're just returning a empty list. Um, so in this case, this is question is very similar to the path sum question. Um, basically, which we will involve backtracking. Um, to solve this problem, pretty much we have to use backtracking because in this case, we're going to use a empty list, right? In this case, when we are starting at the root, the list is basically empty. So if I want to traverse down this node, then I have to add the current node or the current node's value added onto the, the list, right? So, okay, well, then I have five, four here, right? So, and then I when I go to here is five, four, 11. And then when I go to here, basically is five, four, 11, seven, right? And then I know this is a leaf node. So I basically see if the current sum, right? We also have a variable that keep track of the current sum uh, for the current node, right? Then we traverse. Um, so we keep track of the current sum and the current sum now is basically nine plus 11, which is 20, 20 plus seven, which is 27. 27 does not equal to target sum. So that means that we have to backtrack, right? Because in this case, the current sum, right, or sorry, the current sum when we get to here is 27 and the target sum is 20, sorry, 22, right? So in this case, we have to backtrack and to backtrack, we have to remove the last element that we added onto the current list, right? Not only uh, in, the, in this case, we have to backtrack, we have to go down to a different path. We also have to remove the last element, right? And once we remove the last element, this is our list, right? Five, four, 11, right? And then we go down to this path. So in this case, we have five, four, 11, and two, right? So in this case, we have a sum of 22. We know that the current sum, which is 22, uh, is equal to target sum, right? So then we're just going to add the current list onto the result list. So we also have a result list variable that keep track of all the path, right? That has a sum is equal to target sum. So we add this list onto the, the result list. And then in this case, we backtrack to the root, right? Which is here. And then we successfully traverse the right side. So we go here, this node has no right node, right? Has no right subtree. So we backtrack to the root, which is node five. This node has a right subtree. So we traverse down, right? We add five, eight, right? And then the current sum is 13. So we keep going down until we reach to a leaf node. We know that this is 13, so we have five, eight, 13, right? And we know that this is a leaf node and this does not have a sum that's equal to this, right? So we backtrack to here, right? In this case, now we keep going down to the right side. So we have five, eight, 
four. Okay, so now we have, uh, we also have, this is not a leaf node, so we continue. So then we reach to this node right here. Um, in this case, we have five, eight, four, five, right? We know that this is also a valid path. So in this case, in this case, we are going to add a current list onto the result list as well, right? And then we backtrack again to this level, right? So to this list, we remove the last element that we inserted onto the list, right? So then we go down to the right side uh, because we haven't go down to the right subtree yet, right? So in this case, we have five, eight, four, one. And in this case, this does not have a, so the current sum does not equal to the target sum and this is a leaf node. So in this case, we don't add it onto the result list, right? So you can see that this is basically how we solve the problem using backtracking. Um, and then you can see in the code is kind of very similar to how we did in the, the path sum number one question. And what we basically do in here is that if, you know, if the tree is null, right? If the, the tree is null, basically, we just return an empty list. Um, otherwise, we just do a DFS. We pass in a empty list, right? And then you can see that for each and every single uh, recursion stack, we're basically um, updates the target sum, right? So if I want to go down, if I want to do a DFS to go down, then I have to update the target sum. And then I also have to add the current node, its value, right, onto the path. So in this case, we check to see if this is a leaf node. If it's a leaf node, we basically add the current path onto the result list. Um, notice that we're basically creating another instance of this list, right? And we also have to make sure that target sum is equal to zero. Um, and then you can also, what you can also do is you can basically do another variation of this. Like if target sum is equal to zero inside this if condition, right? If the target sum is equal to zero, then do this. And then at the end, we just return, right? But in this case, it doesn't really matter, right? If the, if this is a leaf node and target sum does not equal to zero, like if you go to the else statement, we still won't be able to go down, right? So you can see the root dot left does not equal null. Then we just go down, right? And then same thing for the right side. Um, and then at the end, you can see we're doing backtracking, right? We basically remove the last element that we have in our path, right? It doesn't matter if we go in this path or this path, we still have to remove the last element out of the list, right? So that we can be able to go to another path, right? So you can see this is how we solve the problem. Time complexity in this case is going to be big O of n, where n is number of nodes that we have in our tree. And the space complexity in this case um, is basically just going to be the height of the tree, right? Because in this case, we're going from the root to the leaf node. And this path right here only stores those number of nodes, right? Basically big O of h number of nodes, right? We're basically the height of the tree. Um, and then we're always doing backtracking to remove the last element, right? And then uh, down to another path, right? So, so this, the, the maximum space that we can have, right? In this list is basically big O of h, right? And then of course, uh, this list will keep capture um, basically, uh, you know, number of lists, right? But the thing is basically the space in this case is big O of h, right? So there you have it and thank you for watching.